if everyone looks to a place to safely put your money, it would be a matter of days before the entire industry has nothing. As it is right now, most of the industry has nothing and is, is, is kind of going uh, hand to mouth. Uh, and as we get it, it sells out. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance for this weekly market update with Miles Franklin, Precious Metals CEO, Andy Schechtman. I'm Dunnigan Kaiser, your host. Andy, thanks for coming back on. This is Tuesday, January 11, 2022. Great to see you, Dunnigan. Thanks for having me. Great to have you back. And we wanted to touch base on several things. One thing we talked about uh, last time was how we had a couple of record delivery months off of the COMEX. We had this COMEX gold whale that rolled over the position is carrying it forward. That's interesting. And you mentioned that there's some learnings we have coming out of the most recent December Fed minutes on whether or not they actually will tighten. And if they do, how we think it will affect major markets, including precious metals. Can you give us your quick take on that before we move on to some other topics? Yeah, you know, it's not to be confused with the tapering uh, admission by the Fed that we've all expected. But when the minutes actually came out, we see a, a different picture. We see uh, all the Fed governors saying that they want to double down their efforts in said tapering and all the way into March or April, perhaps all the way down to a zero uh, in terms of in continuing purchasing assets to stop purchasing assets altogether by March or April in combination with or simultaneously raising rates and even paring down their balance sheet, actually selling their mortgage-backed securities and selling their bonds that they've accumulated where you know their balance sheet has risen by almost $4 trillion uh, over the last couple of years. And so they're talking about paring down their balance sheet. This is what caught the market so far, I think, um, uh, off guard in the respect that I think the market thought that they were going to taper and then allow rates to rise, and then start to sell off their balance sheet, not to do all simultaneously, and to double the speed in which they taper and to increase the speed in which they pare down their balance sheet. Now, if we go back to the last time they tried this, 2017 and 18, uh, they, they dropped their balance sheet from somewhere around four and a half trillion to 3.75 trillion, not even a full trillion dollars. And as that happened, leading up to the repo market crisis in 19, the market started to go through convulsions and the Fed reversed course and doubled down their efforts, bringing their balance sheet from four and a half trillion all the way up to eight trillion where we are here today. And so when you look at the way the market has reacted up until this point, you could see this was kind of the belief that the bond traders thought would happen, that they would get tough for a little while, uh, lip service, if you will, jawboning, if you will, that they would um, you know, get tough for a while, for a few quarters uh, into 2022, and then the market would react negatively. And if you look at the reaction of the 10 and the 30-year bond recently, See that they didn't believe the Fed, didn't take them at their word, and they thought that they would do the same thing they did in 2019 and double down uh, more easy money, more stimulus, more low interest rates. Well, if we take the Fed at their word, and it's hard to do so, you know, they told us they were going to start tapering and 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 um, buy 15 billion less per month. If you look at what they did last month, it was only five billion not 15 billion. They don't really tell us the truth, it seems, these days. And so if we take them at their word, uh, they're going to um, start to protect the dollar in uh, at the expense of the markets. And um, a lot of people thought that, that was impossible, myself included. So the question is, are they jawboning? Is it real? And it's kind of like heads you lose, tails you lose. If they get tough on inflation uh, and, and start to uh, defend the dollar, uh, you're looking at trouble in the equity markets, the real estate market, ultimately in the bond market. And you can see that by by the bond market uh, having as bad of a week as it's had in, in years and years and years recently uh, with um, in both the 10 and the 30 year just this week. Huge, uh, 30, 40 years worth of data was the worst week ever in terms of return. And if they go the other direction and um, forsake the dollar, let inflation run wild, uh, you know, protecting the markets, the overbloated markets, why then you have a, 
uh, a bigger problem at hand as, as you literally eviscerate the value of the dollar. We are at an interesting point in history where uh, it seems to me that um, even though the Fed is telling us they're going to get tough on inflation and they are going to uh, let rates rise as many as four times this year, they're going to pare down their balance sheet completely and totally and stop asset purchases. Um, the question is, is that for real? Do we take it for real? Either case, I think um, whether we see inflation running wild or what the Fed could perhaps create a massive deflationary depression, it's important to remember that, you know, in a depression, people talk about gold and silver's uh, prowess in a inflationary period, but in a deflation, as, as Doug Casey has made famous the statement, gold and silver are, are the only assets that are not simultaneously someone else's liability. So whether it's heads we lose or tails we lose, whether the Fed is, we take them at their face value that they are going to get tough on inflation, or indeed it's just more jawboning and they let it run, more stimulus, more printing, as most people think is the case. Either case, it's either the dollar or the markets. And I think it's never been more important to have at least an exposure to physical precious metals as uh, we are on the cusp of, you know, obviously some some very interesting times. In the face of uh, these interesting times, a lot of clients who've been reaching out to us have been um, trying to make their move either first time or increasing their position into precious metals. I've spoken with more and more of them who talk about the, the heat that they take from family members who are getting mainstream uh, financial media inputs or from their mainstream uh, financial planners you know, saying, oh, no, you don't want to mess around with that. Just stay stay the course, 60-40 bonds and you know, stocks and bonds, and uh, the market will, will take us through this and that kind of thing. But the people who, who speak to me are firmly convinced, they're 100% convicted that they want to at least get a significant portion of their nest egg out of harm's way. Um, We've seen, you've warned us that when people start to make their moves, there will likely be shortages of uh, products, uh, of physical metals available to make that move into when the time finally is obvious to people. Just this past week, we've had to start adjusting because of some delays from the Austrian Mint. I wonder if you could bring that up to date on that. Yeah, so the Austrian Mint has, had a, has been ravaged by um, Omicron and uh, they have had to shut down. Uh, and, and, you know, these are unexpected delays, similar to what we saw in 2020, where with the Canadian Mint and the U.S. Mint, where orders were placed, money was paid, promises were made, and the Mint shuts down. Uh, same thing happened in the U.K., same but different. They ran out of blanks. Orders were placed, money was paid, promises were made, they ran out of blanks. Sorry, what are you going to do about it? Um, you know, it's... Uh, Look, I, I read the comments. I know if people think I'm a little boy who cried wolf. I get it. People think I'm just trying to say that uh, physical is hard to get, and yet it, we still have it to sell. Uh, I don't know how much more sincere I can be. I do think it, it will happen. And all of this happening with a very small sample size of the public invested in, in precious metals. You know, look, if we take the Fed at their word and they get tough on, on inflation and they let rates rise, um, you know, they're talking over 2%. Uh, look at it as an example with, with real estate. It's been proven that every 1% rise in, in interest rates can correlate up to a 10% decrease in housing prices. So you let rates rise to 2%, you see housing prices potentially fall by 20%. And what does that say? Even if it's over two years, like they're talking about, what does that say for all the people who just bought new homes at the peak, myself included? Um, does that mean that we have negative equity in the next two years? We're not going anywhere. Anyone who just bought a house isn't going to leave right now. So if you say a 20 percent haircut in uh, in real estate, as an example, this is just a small example. Look at what's happened to the bond market as as um, you know, just over the last week, when, when you have overvaluations the way that you do and you start to see corrections, whether they be by mother nature or forced by the Fed's hands, uh, you're looking at some, some uh, fairly significant corrections and some very, fairly significant moves. If these people realize that they need to take money out of harm's way and move into the physical metals, uh, market, it, it becomes even tougher. And, you know, for the people out there who 
uh, have metal and, and have been getting beaten up by their family members, I get it. You know, it hasn't performed the way that we would have thought it would. I, Alistair McLeod had a great point the other day that if you go back to through 2021, there was a large segment of weak handed people who purchased metal to squeeze the silver market to take advantage of what had happened with GameStop and AMC and bought it, found out it didn't, you know, they, they weren't weathered enough in this industry to understand the dynamics of it and quickly sold, uh, pushing the price down. Now, that was only part of the story, of course, but the point of it simply is, is that big money is throwing us off the, the scent with counterintuitive price action and rhetoric. But yet at the same time this happens, we see 70 million ounces delivered off of silver, delivered off of COMEX. And so, you know, since February and, and when you when you see massive amounts of deliveries in gold and silver off the physical markets and acquisition by, you know, big players uh, from, you know, the, the, the tech company Palantine all the way up to the big whale on COMEX and central and commercial banks, they don't care about price. In fact, it, it's almost as if they are thankful that the price has been held down. So this all leads to big money front running acquisition of metal. And when the realization snaps, you know, if everyone looks to a place to safely put your money, it would be a matter of days before the entire industry has nothing. As it is right now, most of the industry has nothing and is 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 kind of going uh, hand to mouth. Uh, and as we get it, it sells out. Look, we ran that special. I don't remember how many Buffalo rounds we had last week. Maybe you do. But we sold out of it in, what, two, three days? What did we have, 40, 50, 60,000? 45,000, I think. Yeah, we got them in two days, yeah. Well, that's the point, is that, you know, we're just one company. And if 40,000 coins sell like that, and now we have to wait till the next batch comes in, well, what happens if the next batch doesn't come in? Kind of like what we're seeing with the Austrian Mint. It will come back in, or, you know, when is anyone's guess, but... This is only, this really isn't an event. If you see a global meltdown, uh, you know, precipitated by what? Who knows? Um, Evergrande, uh, raising rates, um, crashing markets, whatever it is, very quickly you get to panic and the panic buying and an and immediate greater realization that you need to protect yourself. So this is where all of this stems from, Dunnigan. And, uh, you know, I know it's a constant theme. It probably gets... Uh, people probably get tired of hearing it, but as far as I'm concerned, it's something uh, that is on my radar screen continuously and, and concerns me and, and more so every day. And what we see happening in Austria and in the United Kingdom with our shipments being waylaid for whatever reason is just more more kind of um, verification that, that this is indeed the path we're on. Last week when we spoke with you, you talked about a facility was being put in place to help Canadian clients to be able to purchase in Canadian dollars. Can you bring us up to date on that? Yeah, so we have uh, we are helping promote a website in Canada with a very, very solid partner. Um, and we're happy to announce that uh, their website has been completed. It is mfbullion.ca. This is a website dedicated for clients in Canada who want to pay with Canadian dollars, mfbullion.ca. Um, we are uh, very happy to help promote this site and our partnership with a wonderful group of people out of Canada. And um, it is, uh, it's a fantastic site that uh, will allow people finally who are in Canada to purchase precious metals without having to convert to U.S. dollars first. And, you know, if you're talking a 3% conversion rate, a $30,000 order uh, is 900 bucks in conversion before you even pay the spread above uh, milk price. So um, it is up and running, and uh, it's been a much like many of the things we attempt to do, much, uh, much more value and, and longer uh, delays than we had anticipated, but it's up and running, and we're excited to... Uh, help promote the site on behalf of our Canadian partnership. We also would like the uh, weekly market special opportunity. You always try your best to bring us something that we can offer to our viewers and get the best price, uh, usually the best price in North America that's available on some physical that they can add to or start collecting. Uh, what do we have available this week? Yeah, so we bought the last allocation that from Valcambi of their kilo bars. I bought as many as I possibly could, their last bit that they had coming into the States. 
These are fantastic bars, these Valcambi Kilo bars. They come in boxes of 15, 15 kilos. A kilo, for people who don't know, is 32.15 ounces. It's about the size of an iPhone, fits in the palm of your hand, about two pounds. Uh, it's a very nice way to strike a balance between content and versatility or utility. It's not too big, yet the value is good. In fact, Normally, the kilo would be more expensive than the 100-ounce bar, and right now it's not uh, on this special. At $2.75 over the price of silver, you do not need to buy 15 of them, but they do come handsomely packaged in a box of 15. The bars are serialized, and they come with really nice-looking uh, printed certificates of authenticity uh, that have the matching uh, number stamped on the certificate, as is on each bar uh, that you would receive. Um, and those are 275 offer over, excuse me, and we are also simultaneously gonna offer the Nadir 10 ounce silver bars that were really very popular, more so than I had anticipated when we offered them, people just loved them. Uh, those are $2.95 over the price of silver uh, while supplies last, but uh, we have a fairly decent supply of both bars and we'll be in stock and ready to ship this Thursday. Um, and, uh, you know, looking for a, a very economical way to get silver without compromising utility. Uh, this is uh, both are a really, really good choice. I personally have been buying the Valcambi Kilo bars for myself lately. I think they're fantastic. I think people really love the presentation, the quality of the bar, the quality of the packaging, the whole nine yards. And the Valcambi Mint is... Uh, 65-year-old Swiss refinery, the Valcambi refinery, mint, uh, 65 years old, one of the most respected in the world, and uh, my top pick, uh, really, for, for silver for the last couple of months has been the Valcambi and the Pam Swiss Kilo bars. Yeah, it's it's uh, usually a premium. The Pamp Swiss uh, bars usually trade at a premium to other products. And to have a Swiss refiner that's well-known, such as Valcambi, that does such fine work at the value end of the price point is is really exceptional. People have been appreciating their gold bars as well from us. So uh, thank you for those specials. Always striving to get something that's affordable and available uh, in the hands of our viewers. Appreciate every one of our viewers for being here. Folks, please spread the word. Share the video widely. Make sure you're subscribed and click the notification, click the bell so you get notified of new updates. Make sure you go to libertyandfinance.com and put your name in the uh, email uh, for our, getting our free weekly newsletter out. Actually, now it's daily for crying out loud. We get a, one out every day because every new interview that we put out, and we put out seven times a week, 9 p.m. Eastern, including all of Andy's weekly market updates on Tuesdays. And Andy Sheckman, CEO of Miles Franklin Precious Metals, as always, thanks for joining us for these weekly market updates on Tuesdays. Always great to see you, Don, again. You stay well, and uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you next week. This is Dunnigan Kaiser, founder of Liberty and Finance. I'm now a licensed gold and silver broker for Miles Franklin. Call me directly for the physical gold and silver that you need at the best price with personalized private service from one of the oldest and best companies in the business. 31 years strong, A plus rated by the Better Business Bureau. Zero complaints, licensed and bonded. For physical delivery, vault storage, or precious metals IRAs, excellent prices, privacy, and confidentiality. Pay by check, money order, ACH, bank wire, or Bitcoin. Satisfaction guaranteed. For fastest service, just call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 888-81-LIBERTY. And either I or one of my sons and fellow brokers will call you back as soon as we can and understand your needs.